Using Wi-Fi without NordVPN could mean sharing your private stuff with more people than you think. NordVPN. Online security starts with a click. The world's most advanced cold wallet for the new generation of cryptocurrency lovers. Descent. Descent. This is an extract of a longer conversation that I have with David Siegel about the factors affecting our Earth's climate. You can check out the whole video, link in the description below, and you'll find it on Odyssey because of the censorship practiced by YouTube. Yeah, Let's talk about renewables as a whole. Yep. So the lithium uh, batteries and the hybrid cars, where do they come from? As far as I can get, right, they come from poor, impoverished nations, virtual slave labor, and they use hydrocarbon energy. Which do doesn't matter. It has no effect on the environment. But yeah, there's... But yeah, it has a big effect on your environment when you tear up your whole lake bed and yep. turn it into a factory, right? Or yep. you're mining you're mining cobalt by hand in Congo. Um, it has a big effect on the people, on the economy, on health, uh, and that's what that's what Elon Musk wants. He wants more artisanal miners in Congo because he needs cobalt for every car he produces. Yeah, and that that right. That and so first of all, let me just. Let's, let's just look at the economics for a second, okay? Everybody now has solar panels. You've got solar panels, right? And everybody has some wind turbine on top of this house, let's say. So now everybody's able to not only get electricity, but perhaps even store some or put, sell some back to the grid, okay? The, let's say that, that that's really come a long way and it's free and you can have solar powers on your solar panels on your house and wind turbines for free, all right? Now, the question is, can we now decommission any fossil fuel power plants? No. The answer is yes, as long as we don't care if the lights turn on and the refrigerator works and we have hot water when it's dark and no wind. As long as we don't care that the hospitals are working and the street lights and the police and everything else doesn't work when it's dark and there's no wind, then we can kill all the fossil fuel plants. However, if you do want reliable power, if you want the light, if you want your computer to charge up, if you want your cell phone to work, if you want the cell system to work, if you want to fly on an airplane, no, you can't decommission one power plant because you need full capacity for when there's no wind and no, and no solar, right? And so what does that mean? All we're doing is adding, right? We're adding all these things that have to be mined and built and shipped and installed and maintained and then and then thrown away in 15 years. And we're not changing. In fact, we're making it more expensive to get fossil fuels because now you have to pay fossil fuel generating companies to not produce power. But won't and it turns out we'll need less power plants. You know, as, as we have more and more renewables, we'll need less power plants instead of saying that's not true. Country, we'll, need, we'll just have 10. But that's not true. That that relies on batteries. The only way you can have that, that that can be true is if you have battery power to make up for the shortfall. Right? If you can if you can not only use your electric power that you're getting from your solar cells and use the electric power that you're getting from your wind turbines, plus generate more so you can charge your batteries, so you can last for the weeks of time that might be necessary when there's no wind. You know, imagine a low system comes in and you have a lot of snowfall and you have no wind and that lasts for a week, right? You need to be able to power everything for a week, right? How far are we on that? Well, right now, all of Europe has enough battery power to last for a minute and 11 seconds. All of Europe, that's with today's technology and today's investment. And how much environmental and economic and human devastation would it cost right. to right. get enough cobalt or, or whatever? So everything is additive. Everything we're doing, all your solar power, your solar stuff on your roof is adding because we have to pay false power plants to not generate electricity. They can't fire people and then three days later rehire those people. They can't, a lot of generators can't turn on like that. They need to spin up and it takes quite a bit of time. There's only some kinds that are more expensive that can go quickly. Those are called peaker units and most of those economics just break under an intermittent demand cycle where they have to sit around waiting for the wind to stop blowing. All of the economics break. So it's all twice as expensive 
and uses more fuel. And if you care about CO2, which doesn't matter at all, all put into the atmosphere. Right. Okay. And then that's the green industrial complex. Okay. And then and something- so it's interesting, Rich, because your economics are actually probably better. Your economics on your, on your balance sheet, you're selling some power once in a while. You're getting some free energy. It works for you, right? Yeah. Works for your neighbor. Works for your neighbors, 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 neighbors. It works, right? But for society as a whole, it's completely broken because when that doesn't work, you want the lights to come on. You want your fridge to work. You want hot water. And that's when you rely on the power, the local power station. And that's what breaks. Yeah, yeah. And and just on that, it's like I can, because I'm interested in silver being, you know, come crypto. An Austrian. <laughs> no, no, I like silver. It's pretty, right? But if more and more people in Britain were to install solar panels, it would drive up the price of silver. It would and, so drive up the price of everything. Of everything, right? So then become increasingly uneconomic. And Especially take, energy. Yeah, it, I was going to say it would take more and more energy to produce those solar panels, to produce those Teslas and those other electric vehicles, and then to produce the infrastructure for, to keep those going. It just isn't available. So then... You said and to supplement and to supplement the power you need when those things don't produce will be dramatically more. And we are seeing it in Germany right now. Take a look at price for price of electricity. Sorry about that. Take a look at the price of energy in Europe right now. We've had 20 years of installing, you know, of subsidizing wind and solar energy. Right. Right. 20 years of subsidizing. So there's been a lot of economic incentive to do it. And look at the price of energy in the UK and in Europe right now. Yep. And then something comes along like a war and, and it just, it, what does it do? This hurts poor people more than anybody. It's yep. great for rich people, rich people who can buy Teslas and afford 3X, 5X more power. They don't care on their electricity bill, but poor people right now around Europe are having to choose between rent and energy right now. Yeah, food. Well, you know, I told you I work child protection. I work with the most distressed of all, right? And I know, you know, people are going to have to choose between food. The poor are going to have to choose between food and heating. And we're okay now because it's the summer. But yeah. The winter. Well, you know, especially- Oh, this last winter, three months ago, three months ago, I guarantee you people died yeah. because they couldn't make it. This is energy poverty and it's very real. Yeah, yeah. There, there yeah. are no climate refugees. There are no climate victims. But their energy poverty kills. Yes. Yeah. And the middle classes like myself and the rich, they'll do OK. Although the middle classes will get disappeared slowly. The, the way the, well, the- you get you get to buy fewer cool bikes, but because you, you have to pay your energy bill, you have to pay yeah. your rent, you have to pay food. And you have to. Right. So if your energy bill goes up three or four times, you, know, you just have to t- get that money from some other budget. Yep. Yep. But poor people can't. Yes, which is why which is why the green revolution is not the answer, but the answer would be hydrocarbons, and you're saying also nuclear power. Now that I've not really looked at this nuclear power, right? I just what I'll I give, you, is I'll give you the answer. Yep. Let me give you the answer. The answer is very obvious, and Boris Johnson doesn't understand it. The answer is let the market sort it out. Period. Stop interfering because the market can see how much oil is in the ground. The market can see how much natural gas is in the ground. The market can make calculations about how much it costs to build the infrastructure to supply these things, whether whether nuclear is a win or whether solar is a win. And the market will provide over time, over time, there won't be any, you know, let's say 300 years from now, there won't be any fossil fuel plants, you know, but we, we need to transition naturally rather than some forced march that forces the duplication that we're seeing of everybody rushing to dig up all these minerals and use all this energy to create all this extra stuff that isn't usable when nature doesn't permit, right? So just let the market do it. And over time, because there is no climate emergency, there's no worry about climate. Let the market make that transition naturally rather than forcing the transition.